Well, thank you. Hi, how are you? How's JSCOM so far? Good? Cool. So my name is Maximiliano. I know it's a long name. In fact, maybe you know me as Maximilian O. Ferdman. OK, thanks to Responsive and CSS. Um, Max is fine. I can go by Max. So uh, I'm a mobile web developer. I have been doing web development since that browser, OK, so 1995, roughly. Um, so I'm traveling a lot for conferences, training, and consulting. I'm from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. I have authored a couple of books. The last two are on web performance. And I'm not here to talk about myself, but how the app ecosystem is broken. And probably you know this. For example, this is my phone this morning. So it's trying to update 231 apps. Okay? So I encourage you to do the same thing. Disable automatic updates and see what happens. So also probably you have heard about news in the past few weeks and months. For example, problems with apps that are currently sending a lot of data to different servers. They're selling your data uh, while you're sleeping, not just on iOS, also on Android. And again, because I'm traveling a lot, I flew here through New York because I had a, a flight cancellation. Um, I saw that in Manhattan, that's a, a Penn Station in, in, in downtown Manhattan, download the app for the train station. So do we need an app for the train station? Also, if you go to the store, OK, uh, it's uh, 50 megabytes okay, for the train station app. Uh, reviews are pretty bad. Okay? Uh, and it's not just that app. Okay? So this is a common scenario. We see this every day. And probably you're thinking, well, we are talking about PWAs, right? So PWAs should be the answer for a lot of these apps. Okay? That's why today I'm starting a new Twitter account. It should be a PWA. Okay? That's for real. Um, so that should be PWA. So you can be the first follower, by the way. The idea is to show a lot of uh, apps that are out there that should be based on the web platform. There is no need for an app. So, Progressive web apps. Don't ask me for a definition. We know it's not so clear. How many of you have created PWAs? Let's see. Around 30%. How many of you are working on the web? Most of you, right? So it's basically the same. So why 70% of you are not saying that you are creating PWAs? So I uh, authored this article okay, in Net Magazine a few months ago, and I really like this as a definition. Okay, the, the, the graphic design, the graphic idea that PWA is the current DNA of the web. Okay, so it's, it's basically the web. So just for, for the 70% of you, if you have never heard about this, just um, it's a web app with service workers and with, uh, let's say, an optional layer that has to do with distribution, how users will install or use the app. Because installation is not mandatory. The user can just use the app, the web app, from the browser. So right now, today, 81% of your users are able to install a PWA from the browsers they're actually using to access your websites. Okay, it's a lot. On mobile, it's 92. Okay? On desktop, it's 69. And of course, these, data, these numbers are getting higher every day. So, this is the support on mobile. On Android, it works on every browser. When you are on a website that is a PWA, you can actually install it from uh, to home screen. That's the JSConf PWA. And then you have an app. That app looks like any other app on Android. Okay? You have seen this before, probably. Um, so that's, that's, I think it's pretty cool. It looks like any other app on Android. The same happens on iOS. You can go to Tinder. Do you know Tinder? No one? So uh, Tinder is a PWA, so you can go to, on your iPhone and use the share sheet, add to the home screen, and it will create an icon. And probably you're thinking, oh, but that's not a PWA. It's just a shortcut to the website. But if you open that icon, now you have a standalone full screen experience that, from an OS perspective, looks like any other app on the iPhone. So it's basically a PWA. And then you have KaiOS and Geo. Those are feature phones. There are a couple of million users. For example, I have this Nokia here with me. Feature phones, non-touch, that are supporting PWAs. 
But it's not just on mobile. On desktop, you can also go and install, for example, Trivago. You can also install Tinder, by the way. So, um, and you have a, a desktop window with the app, OK? And that works on Windows, Chromebooks, Windows 7, 8, and 10, Mac OS, and Linux. And of course, you can open more PWAs at the same time. So we have the platform. We just need to create really, really good experiences. And today, let's say that I can say that maybe half of the PWAs out there are offering a good experience. But the other half are still far away for offering, for offering like a competition for the native apps. And so we will try to see why and what we can do today to improve that experience. So let's start talking about the app cycle, OK? So because we are creating apps, not just websites that will appear in the browser. So when you open a PWA, so the app loads like any other web content. That's not sur no surprise. But what happens when the user goes to the background, such as pressing the home screen? Well, you have a visibility change event, and there you can pause a game or an animation. You can stop a timer, OK, because you are not in the foreground anymore. But a couple of seconds later, mostly on um, mobile devices such as Android, the app might be suspended. And there is a new freeze event, meaning that your app will be still in memory for a while, but you won't be executing any code. So if you want to save the state or do something, this is your last dinner, OK, the freeze event. And then you go back to the app. And if you're lucky enough, the app is still in memory. And now resume will be executed. And also visibility change again. But let's say that when you close, let's say, close the PWA, uh, you were using an intensive operation app, such as recording a video, watching a Netflix movie, or, or, or using a 3D game. When you go back, your app was discarded from memory. So in this case, the PWA will start from scratch, like a normal load. But there is now a new Boolean value that you can query, it's discarded, that will give you true okay, in that case. And there, you have the opportunity to load again the state the previous state that you saved before, OK? So you need to start doing this. So what about iOS? iOS is not following exactly this rule. In fact, I did a research on the life cycle of an iOS PWA, and it looks like this, OK? So anyway, the, the important part here is that I'm here in the PWA on iOS. I, you can zoom in, you can scroll, you can click, you can type on a form. So that's the current state. When you get out of the PWA, okay, your, your app is currently uh, frozen. So when you go back, you can see there is like a splash. So uh, it's a starting from a scratch, but basically Apple or WebKit is restoring the state. But if you kill the app, it also restores the state. So there is no way to actually restart the app from a scratch. You can buy a new iPhone, okay, if you want, or, or at least you can restart the phone. But that's a problem, okay, because if you have an invalid state, there is no way to get out of that invalid state. So it's a good idea, on iOS at least, to provide a reload action within your UI, at least until Apple changes this. Also, you can provide full navigation, like a back, back button. We do have gestures here, like swipe from the edge gesture to go back, but also it's a good idea to add um, a visual UI for this. So what about the resources? Service worker is the one that is currently storing and saving and, and serving those files. So the problem is that there are situations where you can find this. You open an app, this is the Uber PWA on desktop, and Uber, in this case Chrome, is saying, hey, I don't have the files. I say, how is that possible? Well, because the browser can delete the files if there is a storage pressure, so no more space on that device, unless you request for persistent storage. So this is something you need to do explicitly. Right? It's a promise API, so you just ask for persistent storage so your files will be there. Now let's move to another topic. This is progressive experience. So far, we have been creating one app for all. So you are creating an app, Vanilla.js, React, Angular, Vue, wherever, Ember. Um, but it's just one app for all. 
But we have a lot of devices. We have desktop devices, we have phones, high-end phones, low-end phones, feature phones that might actually be running your app. Also, we have different connections with bandwidth and latencies, 2G, 3G, 4G, now 5G. I'm here with a 4G device on roaming, and it looks like a slow 3G, OK? And also, maybe you have a Samsung uh, S10 with the best LTE++ Super Ultra, but you have 4% of battery. I, I need something from your web app, but I don't want you to load okay, those four megabytes of JavaScript. So what I'm saying is maybe we need to copy something from YouTube. YouTube has a mental model for users. Like YouTube is trying to guess the best possible experience for that user, and it's picking one quality. But the user can go and change that. Why can't we do the same on our PWA? So there are a lot of APIs today to know about the context such as the Network Information API, Performance Observers, Device Memory API. So you can gather information about that current scenario so you can make some decisions. Also, there is a reporting API available today. It's an HTTP header where you can send an endpoint or a URL, and then the browser will send you for that particular user with real user metrics uh, information reports about performance issues on that particular device, on that particular network, so then you can make decisions to keep a consistent experience. Okay? Because we want to have a consistent experience, such as changing the service worker cache policy based on this. SSR, service are rendered versus clients are rendered. You can switch based on the scenario. Reducing the amount of loaded data and many other tricks that you can apply. So we want to offer a good experience for every user. We are creating PWAs for a real operating system. So we need some kind of platform integration. So we need to do something else compared with a normal website. So for example, web authentication, it's, it's really a, a good example of how you can improve this uh, quickly. Today, for example, 100 Flowers, it's a PWA where you can actually log in pretty quickly with your current session on Android. I, don't ha I didn't have an account on that website before, but with one click, I'm, I'm in. Okay? This is coming on Safari as well. WebShare, you are creating an app that is a standalone, so full screen, there is no browser UI. So how can I get out of my, my PWA? How can I get my content out of my PWA? Well, we can share the content with a very simple API available right now on iOS, Android, and some desktop operating system. For example, I'm here on Twitter, on iOS, Twitter PWA, okay, not the, the native app, and you can just share from there. And it opens the native share dialog. So I think that's pretty cool. And also, we have a version that is WebShare Target API. I can take a picture from my Photos app, and I can share that picture into the Twitter PWA. Okay? Directly. That's the second version of the API that is currently on Canary. Okay? And talking about Android, for those of you on Android, we have something known as Web APK. How many of you have heard about Web APK? Ooh, I can see no hands at all. So that works automatically on Chrome and Android. When you install a PWA from Chrome on Android, on the, in the cloud, the Play Store is creating an APK. An APK is an Android package, okay, the native Android package format. And it's installing that silently in the device, which means, for example, the JSConf PWA, it's actually an, an Android app. I can go to settings and see it's an Android app. It, it even says that it was installed from the Play Store, which is false. Okay? So that's because it's signed by the Play Store. And that creates a really good first-class experience for your Android users. And the same happens on Samsung. If you're on a Samsung device and you're using the Samsung Internet Browser, in this case, it's a web APK signed by Samsung apps. So this is interesting because now you are creating Android native apps from an Android operating system point of view. Now, talking about desktop. So today on desktop, you can do multi-window. That's Google Drive. On desktop, it's a PWA. You can actually open new windows. So it's a multi-window world. You can say, well, on the web, it's multi-tab. Okay? But 
you need to know what you're going to do with this. Now the user can have several apps. You can use the service worker, for example, and the message API to make some kind of control. And future looks really promising. So let me show you a, a, an early mock on how tab application mode on PWAs might look like uh, later, maybe this year, I don't know. So this is from the last Google I.O., where you can see uh, it's your app with several tabs inside. Okay? So on desktop, we have a lot of new challenges on the web. Going back to iOS as our last platform to talk about, let me tell you this. So if you Google PWAs on iOS, the first, the second, and the third articles there are my articles. Okay? And the snippet you see there is also coming from one of my articles. There is no documentation at all from Apple or from the WebKit team. They are supporting partially or totally or buggy the technologies, but there is no documentation. Okay, so you need to be careful, test a lot, and add some metadata that is required for an iOS PWA. So let me tell you one thing only. Apple, shame on you, right? So, um, because this is a problem that we have as a community. So installation experience. So we are creating apps, okay? So we want to create apps. So we need to improve how users will install our app. First, because most users will never know that there is an add to home screen or an install menu in the three little dots a menu in the browser. So we mentioned that we have this web app service worker and distribution uh, rings here. Uh, I did this on purpose. I didn't set web app manifest on the red ring because I don't think it's the only one. Web app manifest is one of the key aspects of the PWA, of course. It's the one that will give you on desktop pretty soon that install button directly in the Omnibox, or the URL bar, in Edge and Chrome. It's also giving you the mini info bar on Android. And on other browsers, it will give you several batches. When you are a PWA, you are passing the PWA criteria. But that, I don't think this is the only important part on, on a PWA you must provide your own install button within your UI, within your menu. W whenever you feel it's, it's a moment to offer the user installation, you can actually add your own install button. So it's simple, but weird, okay? So you need to listen for a new event before install prompt. When the browser thinks that you are passing a PWA criteria, it will fire that event. So you need to basically prevent default first, um, just to avoid the, the browser to show its own banner. And then you want to save that argument that you receive for later usage. And then when the user clicks on that button, you will just call prompt. Okay? So that's roughly how it works. And then you can create your own install button that will trigger the native dialog on desktop and on Android devices. So apart from the web app manifest I already mentioned, you need to add iOS metadata. And something that it's not completely new, but for most web developers, it's something like new. An app launcher. So an app launcher, it's a native package for one OS that will trigger a PWA. I'm not talking about a hybrid, like we've seen Cordoba, Apache Cordoba or PhoneGap. I'm talking about a launcher that opens the browser in a special full screen standalone mode. Okay? So we are not packaging our files, our CSS, HTML, and JavaScript files. We are not packaging those files. We are just launching the PWA, and the service worker will take care of the loading the files. So for Windows, we can create an APPX. Okay, that's the format available. And then you can go to the Microsoft Store. Um, for KaiOS, so again, for this uh, Nokia device, uh, you also can create a cache app generator. There are some tools available, free tools, that will help you in, in the creation of this. So again, you still have your web app. You still have your service workers. We are talking about the, the, the outer ring, OK? Just that. You need to do something else, not just the web manifest for these, um, these operating systems. Probably you are thinking, well, what about Play Store? What about Android? Let me give you one example. 
One example that I mentioned before, 1-800-Flowers, an e-commerce site from the US where you can buy flowers. They created a really good PWA. There were even uh, mentioned in last Google I.O. keynote. They also used to have or have a native Android app that was Okay. Reviews on the native Android app was kind of, uh, okay. Well, now if you go to the Play Store today, uh, you go to trending, then the fifth one is 800 flowers, okay. And you can actually go there and install the app from the Play Store, okay. Well, that app is basically a PWA, okay. It's the PWA. So now they have replaced their native app with a PWA. This is now possible. So you can publish new apps as PWAs, or you can, if you have on your company a crappy Android native app, you can name package ID and then upload a new version, and all your users will receive now the PWA version. And from now on, you don't need to upload any more updates because you just changed the files on your server. You don't need to package new, uh, new APKs. So this is thanks to trusted web activities. That is something new available on Android with Chrome. Maybe it's going to appear with other browsers as well. So far, it's only on Chrome. That will let you compile your own Android app. You need to use Android Studio. Okay, It's just one line of code that you need to set. That is basically your URL. You need to certify, you need to certify that you are the owner of that PWA, of that, dom of that URL. And when you do that, you set the icon, the URL, and you go to the Play Store. So you can actually today publish PWAs in the Play Store, OK? So what about iOS? Can we do something for iOS? Probably you're thinking no. Well, let me tell you, I found something. It's not exactly what you're expecting anyway, but I found a way using a tool known as Apple Configurator where you can actually set uh, web clips for full screen. That full screen thing there, that is basically a PWA. So this creates a mobile config file that you can serve on Safari on a website, or you can send by email. And if the user accepts that configuration file, it will be one or more icons that you are setting in that file. This is for enterprise distribution. Okay, it's not for end users. But for enterprise distribution, this is one way that you have today to distribute your PWAs. One tool that is really cool and interesting that you can use today to create these packages, because, hey, we are web developers. Okay, yeah, Android Studio is there. It's kind of uh, tricky, right, to understand Android Studio and how it works. PWA Builder, it's a free tool from Microsoft that will let you create all these packages. Even if you don't have a service worker, it will help you create in the service worker. If not, if you already have a PWA, it will create the APK for the Play Store, the APPX for Microsoft Store, and it will even create you a version for the iOS App Store, using, in that case, the web view. So it will be like a hybrid for iOS for the App Store. So we can distribute apps in the store. But you're thinking, hey, but if we are the web, we shouldn't be in the store. That's a different discussion. But from a business point of view, it's a good idea to be there. But we need to be careful, because not every app can be in the store. For example, there is a PWA today um, that I'm not sure if you have heard about, that icon. How many of you know what that icon is? No one, right? I have one here. Well, that is uPorn. Okay? So they have a PWA, and of course, they cannot be in the store. Okay? So because the store has some rules, and you need to check those rules. It's not just for adult content. You cannot publish private apps, apps for your employees, for example. You cannot create apps that are is using PayPal or other mechanisms to sell content. So you need to check those rules, OK? So the modern PWA cheat sheet, OK? We have seen basic PWA support that we need to add. Then understand the life cycle. Progressive experience, not the same app for all the users. Then platform integration. We need to integrate with every platform. 
bugs, hacks. We need to do that, unfortunately. Then we need to improve installation experience, creating your own install button and also publishing in the store. Okay? So this is, for me, what you need to do today to create a really good PWS. Okay? That's all. Thank you. <laughs>